Today I'll be showing you how to rebuild a precision journal bearing turbo. So this is the compressor housing already off. I'm gonna polish this while it's out, but it's very simple, straightforward. So I just took it off, but just to show you, you just give it a little pull after you get the uh, bolts out of there and the whole compressor comes out. So this kit actually gives you a bunch of new parts and I'll show you that in a second. But the turbo is looking pretty good and it doesn't really look like it's hitting in here. A little bit of swirling from oil. You can also see that there's been a little bit of oil through here. So this is probably from um, my uh, flooded intercooler before because my last turbo was blown. So when closing the uh, throttle body and it going out the blow off valve, if you have turbo flutter, it does come back to the turbo to air a little bit. Obviously, it's not going to make the turbo spin backward, but that's probably where the oil's from. This is a Precision 5831. So from TurboKits.com website. And uh, no, I'm not sponsored, but if you'd like to, let me know. Uh, this is a journal bearing. They sell journal bearing rebuild kits. And here's the entire kit here for a 5831. And they said it's most precisions under 62 millimeters so it's got the thrust bearings and pretty much every other piece of hardware you need and it comes with pretty good rebuild instructions so i'll be taking this out of the car before i go any further so i have to unbolt my downpipe and get this whole thing in the vise so first step in rebuilding your turbo make sure the turbine housing and compressor housing are going to be lined up so I already marked mine. I got three lines right there, and it's on the back of the housing there. And then you're gonna do the same with the turbine housing. So you disconnect your wastegate, your downpipe, your uh, feed, your drain, and then you're ready to take it out. So now I have the turbo on the bench, and you can see the oil on the back side there, but uh, it can't really hurt if I put it in the vise anyway, it's cast iron. So I'll start by just marking everything like the directions say and making sure it's all straight. And it says some are left-handed threads. If turned counterclockwise, it'll snap a shaft. So don't do that. So basically, I can see it right here. This one is left-handed. So I'm going to have to turn this uh, clockwise to take this off. So make sure you look at the thread direction. So turning it clockwise, remove the nut and with a rubber mallet lightly tap the threaded shaft you're going to tap this after taking this nut off it's going to take your whole compressor wheel and slide that off and the whole thing is going to slip right off with this the way that i like to line things up is have at least three lines so your main line and then two others and for this i marked all the way down the shaft so everything is completely straight and lined up all, all the way down the turbo. So it's a 3 8 wrench over here and a 5 8 socket on the back side, at least for this one, 5831 turbo. And make sure you're going clockwise and not counterclockwise to loosen it because I almost just did the same thing. There you go, it's coming off pretty good now. And double checking to make sure all my lines are still there before I go taking anything else apart. Now that it's all lined up, go ahead and take these bolts off the center section. Because if you go to tap on this shaft, um, you're going to have your turbine wheel in the way. I won't be able to get out of this housing. So you have to take this off and put your bearing section in the vise. And the whole center section comes out just like this. Now we have two separate pieces and it really doesn't look chewed up at all. So I have rubber jaws just for things like this. You wanna make sure you don't mess up these uh, flats here for your feed and drain. You're gonna make sure you loosen this nut, which is a right hand turn. And then while the nut's on, you're gonna tap the shaft with a rubber hammer. I have this instead of a rubber hammer to take the blow so it's not killing it. I got a couple more taps on here. Okay, so it's almost off. 
So this is about to come off right now, but you can see the piston ring in the back there, which is what the oil is leaking out of. So this whole shaft area in there is pretty crucial. Don't want to go banging around. So now as I'm pulling this off, you can see there's really no area to put a puller on this. So don't try to use any metal objects and pry from the side. You're going to end up bending your whole compressor. And then at that point, you might as well just get a whole turbo because you're going to have to get compressor and turbine and balance them both together. Lightly tap the aluminum backing plate to separate it from the bearing housing. It's already loose enough. So this is going to hold our center shaft. Let me make sure that all of this doesn't fall apart. I'll put the camera down. Gently slide this off. You'll see that this is one of the uh, oil fed bearings here. It goes right through the front. This shaft with this little indent here is part of what feeds that bearing right there. So this one, um, I don't really think it went at all. They have a little bit of side play to give it an oil cushion. So don't worry, your turbo may not be blown. There's a little side play, but if the um, turbo can actually touch the housing, the compressor housing, then you might have an issue. So it says there are three types of compressor seals for these uh, turbos. First one is a single piece carbon seal pressed into and out of the backing plate as an assembly. The other is a four piece carbon. So by the look of it, we have one carbon ring that goes all the way around. And then it says two types of thrust bearings used on these. One is a 270 degree, not a full circle. And if you have this type, use a pick and pull the um, bearing off the housing. The other is a thrust bearing 360. Can be removed by the three Allen head screws or by anti-rotation pins. So this one has three screws. So I'm gonna get my massive ratchet for these really small screws and loosen those up. Luckily, you don't have to worry about lining this up later. It's got a little pin that holds it. Just make sure your orientation is correct. You can't really mess this up. The uh, groove is pointing toward this pocket for oil so that you constantly have flow through here. After taking off the thrust bearing, you have this little bearing spacer right here between uh, that and the main bearing pull this whole thing back just a little bit using the shaft just slightly press this out of here don't do any sudden movements it's all light copper this might get worn out pretty good so you can see a ring in here um, catches my finger a little bit the inside isn't too bad the whole shaft out with all of this, make sure it's pretty carefully. Don't want to wreck any surfaces. Usually on turbos, when they start smoking, they'll get this massive amount of uh, coking on the back. And this is usually the culprit, is this little piston ring at the bottom, all the way down here. I just did a little cleaning on the back side to get rid of the uh, carbon deposits and the bad oil. Uh, make sure that, you know, you sand this upside down if you're doing it. Because if you're going like this, it's going to get inside the turbo. So I'm doing this before I take out the snap rings and the center bearings. And now we can get a better look at how this works. So here's the snap ring and one journal bearing. And you can see all the way through, you can see the other bearing there. So this entire section gets filled by oil and um, there's two feeds that come down, one's for the front and one's for the rear bearing, gathers here, and it can grab that oil and use it for everything else. So I'm not gonna change the um, carbon bearing out, considering they didn't give me a new one, and dealing with carbon is kind of a pain. And here's the piston ring at the bottom that fails and uh, leaks all the oil out. So there's one piston ring in the back that holds all of the oil pressure. So it's no wonder running 22 pounds of boost on this thing for a little bit was enough to kill it. Now that we have everything disassembled, here's the rebuild kit. So I'm taking a look at this. We got both journal bearings. We got the uh, couple snap rings in there. 
we have the thrust bearing and I'm gonna see if these are just upgrade parts and then we have the extra we have the piston ring to seal so I didn't want to throw out even this front seal just in case these don't fit right now that the turbos apart I'm going over and making sure I have everything in the kit before I start putting anything back in so we have these three uh, bearing thrust bearings uh, in this kit so that's good we have the piston rings and we have two new journal bearings so uh, one of the piston rings is right here on the actual turbine shaft and the other is on this so this is your front oil seal and then you have your rear oil seal this looks pretty beat up for a bearing uh, you could tell it's been been overheated a little bit some burn mark there so I don't think the inside is bad. That still seems perfectly fine, which is great. So I took out the old piston ring and popped the new bearing in here. Here's the old bearing. And you can kind of see the two grooves taken out of it. So this turbo might last uh, about a week, considering it's gonna be 100,000 RPM. So here's the rear bearing. And here's the front bearing, which isn't too bad. So if you're checking shaft place, sometimes you'll feel this one and the thrust bearing, but you can't really check the back. So I would bet that was the start of all the issues here. So I'll build this and finish it as the tutorial. So I just opened the kit and I'm gonna test all the thicknesses of the bearings, the old and the new, so we can see if this kit really matches up to the specs. First off, we have the old journal bearing in the front and that's point 619 almost let's see the new one surprisingly the new one is like the same size it might be a couple ten thousands bigger so that's great we have the old thrust bearing and the new one new one is about 0 0.271 and a half the old thrust bearing is about the same uh, 0.272 so it's a little thicker than the new one we'll see let's see so we have the old spacer 0.236 and a half 0.234 and a half so there's a little bit of a difference a little flat on this and you got a concave on this one and then we have our front bearing almost 0 0.5 it's 0 0.485 that's a new one yeah it's about the same so that's good so we'll see how this fits together there's a couple thousands difference between these nice dude So you may not know to check the piston ring land on the actual turbine itself, but you'll get a lot of buildup in here from the back of the turbo and that other plate, and it'll actually sneak under here and separate the uh, ring land. So you just gotta get in here. I have like 600 grit, and I'll probably do a thousand. You just polish it up a little bit, nothing crazy, and this will get the deposits out for a better seal. So I got the piston ring back on the turbine side and just pop it in there with your uh, heat shield on the back. So everything else is all set. Uh, this bearing doesn't have a snap ring. I thought it did. It does on the back side to keep it from moving toward the back. So this is the old one. And since it worked fine, I'm not gonna bother using this one. It's got this weird conical face to it. So I'm gonna use the flat one trusted and true from OEM and put this back on so you should use assembly lube for all of this stuff like the red bottle um, currently I'm using this Lucas heavy-duty oil stabilizer so that stuff works pretty good it's like molasses so I'm using this instead anything thicker than oil that'll stay on there and survive a few seconds of heat is good but you can see there's barely any drag and the bearings are working right now. What I didn't realize is I went to go use the old bearing spacer right here, and that's matched to this inner diameter. You see how this one's smaller? This only fits inside this one. 
I thought that was damaged, but these actually hold oil before it goes into these center grooves. Make sure this is facing the right way here, but you start putting the bolts in. Pretty much everything after this you're going to need a torque wrench for, so make sure you're reading the whole manual like twice before you do anything else in here. And everything's back together, so I just got to tighten these up, and they don't give you a torque for them. I'm looking, they got the back plate, turbine housing, compressor housing, elbow assembly, and the shaft nut, and that's it for torques. Everything else on their sheet here is to check where. Nice thing is there's no shaft play on this at all with the uh, old thrust bearing. So this is all set to, this is the new one. Looks like the old one had a little bit of a groove in it. So I'll set this up in the vise and use all the new bolts and make sure everything's lined up when I'm putting it back together. So I don't mean to badmouth, but I'm considering this kit is halfway useless. We could have just gotten a couple bearings. Most of the hardware I'm not going to be reusing because look at the size of the bolts for the rear housing. So that's the replacements for those. But they also changed the shape of this one, which is weird. So I'm not going to use that. And I probably can't use these bolts because they're too short. So really, I just have the couple seals. This might be for another turbo. I didn't take one off of mine. So I'm setting the actual entire most of the turbo here into the exhaust housing and so tighten these up equally so go right across and then across again and keep doing that and then you're going to torque it to turbine housing 164 to 181 inch pounds the only way to torque these bolts on the turbine housing is with a crow's foot at a 90 degree because if you use it at a straight angle you're actually giving it more torque than it needs so 181 at a right angle still got all my dremel marks here going all the way down my line going back to the turbo so i got everything measured with a uh laser which i didn't show i shown a laser across and just drew a line everywhere and then you're just going to go through and torque to all their specs keep in mind that even though it's all new there still should be a little bit of shaft play because that front bearing has to have some room for oil to get through shouldn't be any like that in the rear though and there shouldn't be any back and forth play like if you can move it this way that's a bad thing <laughs> 